burning boom of smoke and gas and hot rockets going five kilometers into the air, 10 kilometers into the air, 15 kilometers into the air. And the people watching this volcano are going, what is going on? What is this? And some of them are starting to run away. But others are thinking, oh, that's 10 kilometers away, that volcano. It's never going to affect us here. But then, these little tiny rocks of pumice stone start to fall off. And you can tell by the noise that the zipper rock makes when it hits the roof of the building. That's a different kind of rock. It's very nice. It's low density. And you can see the way that it floats in the water. That is very it's, um, buoyant. It's got a low density. And so now more people are starting to think, OK, this volcano is going to be a problem. We need to run away. And then bigger pieces of rock start to fall on the house. And you can hear them get bigger because you can tell that by the sound. But they're not going to be able to escape now, but something even more terrifying is going to happen. This enormous towering plume of gas and smoke and rock is now 30,000 feet in the air. That is so high, it's blocking out the sun, and at night it has become in the middle of the day. But there's so many thousand tons now of material in this plume that it can no longer support its own weight. And what happens? It collapses. And it back down the volcano. And now you've got one of the most terrifying things you will see before you die, because you'll die very quickly, because what you've got now is a pyroclastic surge. And this is a rock avalanche that now speeds down the volcano faster than you can run, faster even than you say bolt can run, faster than a car. You'd have to have a plane to escape this because it is coming 700 kilometers an hour. And it is like a fast, vicious river that is coming down, you can't escape it, and when it does hit you, you die instantaneously, because it's 300 degrees Celsius. So your flesh instantly burns, and you, you can't breathe, you suffocate, and then you are covered very quickly in a layer of ash, a couple of centimetres, and then three metres of death. And then you are crushed, and you are covered, and you're preserved. I don't know if that's ringing a bell for anyone, that sort of story, because that's what happened to Pompeii. Uh, but no one really believed that story of the pyroclastic surge. Uh, there was a guy, a historian, when you were younger, who wrote about it, but modern historians didn't believe it. They thought he was making it up. This rock avalanche is coming this fast, 10 kilometers away, and killing everyone in Pompeii. But then in the 1980s, the same thing happened in Mount St. Helens in the US. And the living people were able to see that this was a real event, and so they knew these pyroclastics did exist. So, in a three minute video, there, I have taken you from the inside of Earth. I have told you about magma, you've learned about lava, you've learned about density, you've got changing states, we've had a new language introduced, pyroclastic surges. We have been from Pompeii 2,000 years ago to Mount St. Helens just a few years ago, so we've had a history lesson. And we've had a geography lesson all in three minutes. And that's the power of really good video. And that's why I wanted to ask the question earlier about the most, uh, you know, why you think children like to be here, what you think they learn from it. Because children like to be because it's exciting, it promotes discussion and debate, they understand things. And when we have videos like uh, Volcanoes in the Classroom, the children, you know, they want to see more, they want to ask more questions, they want to know about other volcanoes. And they want to know about tectonic plates, they want to know about earthquakes, maybe they want to know about how you predict volcanoes, maybe they want to write a story about a volcano, maybe they want to draw a volcano, maybe they want to do a, a math exercise to find out, well, how fast would you have to run to escape the volcano? So now children are engaged and we're going beyond the curriculum. That's what you want to do in a classroom, I think. It's really, you know, stimulate the kids so they can their own critical thinking skills. And the other thing about the video is we talked about class differentiation earlier, when you've got um, you know, learners who perhaps struggle with literacy and you've got the really high achievers. But what a video does, it levels the playing field. Everyone can see the video, everyone can, can understand the video. And so the whole classroom is on the same level and everyone can talk and engage um, on an equal playing field. Whereas before, sometimes, you know, the people who aren't so good at reading, couldn't read the text, they get left behind. But now everyone is working together as a team. Anyway, I, I will speak about the power of videos. You know, 
but I love the TV. But next week, somebody.